Hey there guys, welcome to this video. My name is Pushpinder Gill and in this video we are going to be talking about uh, the cross price elasticity of demand which is also known as XED because you know this is something which represents a cross, right? That's why. So <clears throat> let's let's talk about the cross price elasticity of demand. So if, I, I hope that you already watched the video on the price elasticity of demand. Well, uh, this is going to be similar but it's just going to be a little different. Now, what is the definition of cross price elasticity of demand? Sorry about that. What is the definition of cross price elasticity of demand? So the definition says that that the cross price elasticity of demand is actually equal to it's equal to the percentage change. It's equal to the percentage change uh, in quantity demanded of product X or good X. So that is percentage change of uh, percentage change in quantity demanded of good X right divided by the percentage change in the price of good Y so percentage change in the price of good Y now let me take an example a very simple example let's suppose I talk about tea and sugar right so let's suppose I talk about tea and sugar if the price of tea rises if the price of tea rises what's gonna happen people are going to consume less tea right so let's suppose one tea bag costs a million dollars right so people are not going to consume tea very few people are going to consume tea so if the price of tea rises there would be less consumption of tea so there would be less consumption of tea and since tea and sugar go hand in hand I mean a lot of people prefer to have sugar in their tea so what's going to happen there would be less consumption of sugar as well so there would be less consumption of sugar as well which means that what happened here is let's suppose if I say this is my product Y and this is my product S X what happened here the cross price elasticity uh, was equal to the percentage change in the price of T the percentage change in the price of T uh, and that would be the percentage change in the quantity demanded for sugar right so there was a little bit of effect or you know a little bit or more than that uh, there was an effect of change of price of tea with respect to sugar so this is what we call the cross price elasticity of demand fine so I hope you're able to understand my point over here uh, let's move forward and let's actually go and talk about an example here so let's say for example if I say that uh, let's say if I say that the price for tea goes from uh, four dollars to five dollars so let's suppose the price of tea rises to four dollars from five dollars because of that the demand for sugar because of that the demand for sugar goes from 50 units to 40 units right so what is going to be percentage change in the price of tea so the percentage change in the price for tea is actually going to be equal to final minus initial divided by initial in 200 which is actually going to be equal to 1 over 4 into 100 which is actually going to be equal to 25 percent and the percentage change in the quantity demanded for sugar it's actually going to be equal to final minus initial over initial into 100 that's how you calculate percentage change which is going to be negative 1 over negative 10 over 50 into 100 that's actually going to be equal to negative 20 percent which means if I want to calculate the XED that is going to be equal to the percentage change in the quantity demanded for sugar which is negative 20 divided by the percentage change in the price for tea that is 25 which is going to be negative 4 by 5 which is going to be negative 0 0.8 now that's how you calculate XED. Now what is the meaning of this 0 0.8, right? I told you the, 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 the cross price elasticity of tea and sugar is negative 0 0.8. What is the meaning of that? And how do I interpret this? Now let's go ahead and interpret a little bit about the XED coefficient. You know, this is, this is something known as the XED coefficient, the value, the value that you get. So the value XED equal to negative 0 0.8 is actually the coefficient. Now what is the meaning of this coefficient? Now, first of all, uh, I'm going to talk about the sign of coefficient. What happens when you have the XED as positive and what happens when you have XED as negative? Now, let's suppose, for example, uh, you have two products. Let's suppose tea and sugar. Now, tea and sugar are both, 
you know, they are known as complementary products. What are they known as? They're known as complementary products. What are complementary products? Complementary products are the products that you consume together. Okay, so products that you're likely to consume together. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, for example, car and petrol. So these both are uh, these both are complementary products. Another example would be tea and sugar, of course, and coffee and sugar, of course. Uh, so these are known as complementary products which you consume together. Now, let's say the price for tea rises. If the price for tea rises, what's going to happen for quantity demanded for sugar? It's going to go down because people are not going to have tea. Similarly, people are not going to have sugar. So XED in this case is actually going to be negative. Why is it going to be negative? Because one thing is rising and one thing is decreasing. You know, if price rises, quantity demanded decreases, which is why you're going to get XED negative as we got in the previous case even if the price reduces for tea let's suppose people uh, the, the 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 price reduces for tea people start consuming tea a lot and then because of that people start consuming sugar a lot so that means what's happening the price is reducing and the quantity is increasing if one is going down other is going up the ratio is going to be negative that means when xcd is negative the products are complementary products so when XED is negative, the products are complementary products. That means the products are likely or not likely are sure to be consumed together. I mean, they're not rivals of each other. They are the products which are consumed together. Now, what happens when XED is positive? That means what happens if I say, let's say, for example, I'm going to pick up a right example here. Let's suppose Pepsi versus Coca-Cola. So if the price for pepsi rises if the if you know if pepsi becomes expensive people are not going to have pepsi then people will switch to coca cola that means the quantity for coca cola will rise if price for pepsi goes down uh, that means pepsi becomes cheaper than coca cola then the quantity consumed for coca cola will go down as you can see from here that they both have the same signs you know if this goes up this goes up if this goes down this goes down in this case xed is actually going to be positive right now what does pepsi and coca cola with respect to each other pepsi and coca cola they are substitute goods so what do you mean by substitute goods substitute goods are the goods uh, I think you can make it out from the name that uh, you know they're substitutes of each other for example tea and coffee tea and coffee are substitutes for each other I mean uh, if you if you if you like tea you probably won't like coffee if you like coffee you probably won't like tea or you like both but they're substitutes of each other I mean you can actually consume one and that will not ask, let you consume other uh, another thing another example would definitely be Pepsi and Coca-Cola and you can think of so many examples in your real life scenario right uh, where two products are substitutes of each other let's say uh, you can say that a petrol car versus electric car right so petrol car petrol car versus an electric car or for example very good example would be petrol and diesel they both are substitutes of each other either your car will consume petrol or your car will consume diesel so that means what I wanted to say is that if XED is less than zero if XED is less than zero both the products are complementary to each other that means they're likely to be consumed together and if XED is greater than zero then both the products are substitutes of each other that means they one of them is going to be consumed now another thing is what I want to talk about is the uh, it's the value of the XCD you know what is what what range of values XCD can take so let's suppose if I say that XCD it's actually uh, the the positive value of XCD is what I'm concerned about I don't want to take negative values I just want to take the positive values if the positive value of XCD is greater than one that means that percentage change in quantity demanded for product X divided by the percentage change in the price for product Y if you take the positive value if that is greater than one then what do you mean by that that means that both the products are price elastic what do you mean by price elastic by price elastic I mean to say that if you change if you a small change in price will bring a big change in quantity demanded a small change in price will bring a big change in quantity demanded that means if you 
increase the price for tea even by a little bit then the the quantity going down for sugar would be huge so that means this is what i mean by price elastic that you can clearly see that quantity demanded for product x the the absolute value is going to be greater than the percentage change in price that means if you change the price by 10 percent the quantity would the quantity demanded will change by more than 10 percent so that is what they mean by price elastic now another thing is that what if the absolute value of xcd is actually less than one or and greater than zero of course the positive value has to be greater than zero if xcd value is less than one that means they both are considered to be price inelastic now when i say price inelastic i mean to say that a big change in price a big change in price will lead to a small change in quantity demanded so a, a big change in price will lead to a small change in quantity demanded right so that means they are price inelastic to each other that means you'll have to change the price of tea by a lot of amount to change the consumption of sugar right so another thing is that what if xcd is equal to zero what if xcd is equal to zero that means both the goods are completely unrelated they have no relation whatsoever now why is that because a price change of y will bring no change in quantity demanded for x for example airplane tickets and chewing gums right so airplane tickets and chewing gums if the price for chewing gums rise that is not going to lead to a change in the quantity demanded for airplanes it can be incidental however it definitely won't have a relationship like that fine so that means the more xcd becomes close to zero the more the goods are unrelated and the more it goes goes beyond zero that means the goods are more related to each other right so that's how uh, you know we actually do this so i hope you understood my point here guys so this was about xcd so i hope you understood what i was explaining you here Thank you very much for watching this video and uh, uh, you, I'll be posting more videos on economics. I'll be covering up the whole syllabus and uh, so that would be it. So make sure that you give us your valuable like on this Facebook page, explore our website and also give us your valuable feedback at this email address. So thank you very much for watching this video guys and I'll see you in the next one.